How's it going, guys? And welcome back to Retrospect, your go-to retro gaming podcast. You're listening to episode 50. Today, with it being episode 50 and our last two podcasts focusing on Sega and Nintendo, it's only fitting to have a full panel discussion on the age-old discussion of Mario versus Sonic. And no, this is not Mario versus Sonic at the Olympic Games. This is the real <laughs> deal. Or we're hashing it out. And we have a panel of just full-blown Philosopher King experts here to join us. The folks from Retro Dodo. Starting at the top, we got Brandon Saltalamachia, the Philosopher King himself. How's it going, dude? Hello, hello. I'm good, man. I, I feel like I'm going to be one-sided to Sonic, but seeing your notes, there's actually some valid questions in here where mm-hmm, I, might, mm-hmm. I might have to be a traitor. Who Things knows? to think about. Things to think about. We have uh, Pixel Pursuit Rob on the mics again. What's up, dude? Hello. Yeah, I'm doing well. How is everybody? <laughs> doing so good. good. Yeah, so good. Very good. We got Midlife Gamer Geek Jason on the mics again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. That's like a very like Obi Wan Obi Wan situation <laughs> right there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> and Anthony, aka Nara makes games, rejoins the podcast again. What's up, man? I think it's pretty obvious what team I'm on. <laughs> oh yes. For those listening, he has a nice diorama behind him of Mario and Luigi. So he'll be representing Team Mario on the podcast today. But before we jump into our major and incredibly important discussion, a discussion that's been had many times, but we will actually solve today on this podcast. I do have a bit of housekeeping for everyone. So uh, this is exciting. Being episode 50, Brandon and I kind of talked before recording this, and you may have heard us on the podcast kind of thinking of some ideas. And we've decided, and uh, Brandon has been so kind as to pull from his massive collection of emulators to give away, ooh, beautiful on the video, you already see it, a Retroid Pocket 3 Plus for the big episode 50. So anyone that is already subscribed to the YouTube channel, you are already entered to try and win this thing. But if you haven't subscribed already, you can go ahead and subscribe and we'll be pulling that list from the channel directly and then just running a random generator on there for anyone that has subscribed to give away. Because you know what? We appreciate you guys. We want to make sure that we show some love here on the channel to all the listeners out there. So thank you again so much. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We'll be running that, that whole, I guess, contest for a week. And we'll announce it on next week's episode 51. And we'll also put it on the socials for those who may not have time to tune in. So we will uh, be giving that away. Be excited. Can't wait. And since we have a lot to talk about, we're going to go straight into the topic of the show, Mario versus Sonic. So real quick, I got to get a sip of water. Mm, That's important. So... At the very top, I have some rules here that everyone should know. Uh, we are mediating, I am mediating and acting as the efficient of this, this panel here today. The others will debate openly and all their, until all other cases have been heard. So we're going to be doing Mario versus Sonic on these nine questions I've picked out. And we'll vote on the, on the uh, questions at the very end after we've finally had our say. And um, representing Team Sonic, we have Rob and Jason... Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, Rob and Brandon, forgive me. Get out of here, yeah. And in the back, in, in the back, you'll see uh, Rob has placed a really nice a little Sonic in the corner over there, and uh, right in the corner, watching over me, making sure I don't do anything wrong. <laughs> if I start and, defending Mario, he's going to be after me. He's like, "What have you done? Why have you said this?" And Brandon, I don't think I saw any uh, Sonic paraphernalia back there. Maybe uh, you got a Game Gear poster, close Game as you're Gear. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got like more Mario stuff than Sonic. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> don't, don't look. S- don't, yeah, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, and then, yes, Jason and Anthony uh, will be representing Team Mario. And so Jason has a lovely Mario alien shirt on. I do. So I wonder what that is. There you go. So if you are watching. Yeah, oh, wow. There you go. Mario's nice. face is just <laughs> getting obliterated. <laughs> and you have a Mario mug, which is a nice touch. I do. A nice little, uh, nice little touch there wonderful and then yes as we mentioned anthony has this really nice diorama back behind him are those what what are those figurines they look super weird are they like lego guys or they're really weird um (laughs) like they were made in bali i bought them in bali and uh they're not official (laughs) 
They look not, wooden. Uh, Are they wooden? They yeah. Not official they're like merch. Mar- Mar- marionette dolls or whatever they're called. Oh, is there a <laughs> little play on words some, there? You could probably tie some strings on them and dance them around. I love that. It's like the sort that. of thing you would get that's going to turn out to be cursed or something. <laughs> yeah, it's freaky. <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Definitely. Depends cursed. how the debate goes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. depends how the debate goes today. Yeah, if you, if they're not happy with your answers, uh, you might start seeing some weird things happen in your house. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we've picked out nine questions, and Anthony, looking at your note, did you want to start with that question, or did you want to st- when we get to that one, you want to start first on that? Yeah, question? when we get to that one, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, all right. I don't know if I can give any preferences. You know, this has to be a pretty unbiased trial here, uh, so we'll have to kind of just go in order. Uh, So if you want to go first on that question, I'll allow Team Sonic to start us out here first on this one. So starting at the very top, an easy question. Who has the best games between Mario and Sonic? I'll open the the floor up to you, Rob and Brandon, first. Mm. You want to take this one, Rob? (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, Sonic has a lot of varied games. I mean, as does Mario, but I feel like some of the spin-offs with Sonic are a little bit like underrated, and you could say that maybe in some ways they're better than the Mario games, like the uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed, I think is one of the best kart races ever made. Mm-hmm. But it's different to Mario Kart. It feels almost a little bit more like, I don't know, like the, the, ski, the skill ceiling is a bit higher in that game, I think. It's got boss fights and stuff as well, which has never really been done in Mario Kart properly before. Uh, but yeah, mm. I think there's a, in, even in the mainline Sonic games, there's probably a little bit more going on than with the Mario games as well. A little bit more you, variety, I would say. Apparently there's over 30 mainline Sonic games as well. So there, there's, there's a wide selection to choose from. And depending on the era you're talking about, you know, Sonic had, Sonic had some... Uh, some some true battles with Mario in terms of uh, who had the best graphics and processing going on, you know, in the nineties, Sonic was, uh, was doing some impressive things in terms of just parallax, you know, just visuals. And there was a lot more blast processing going on in those games. Um, and I think Sonic was... had kind of like a lot more going on as well, because like in the, there was Mario Sunshine, and that was the only mainline Mario game in that entire generation. Sonic had like Sonic Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, like Sonic probably Adventures. even more. Like, yeah, the Sonic Adventure games. So many Sonic things coming out at that time. It was insane. Mm-hmm. Then you had all the spin offs as well. It is true. And you got the Chaos Emeralds too. I mean, you got to think about all these things that come into play. Uh, all of their 3D versions as well, I was pretty impressed with. You know, just. Their their jump from a two D Sonic to a three D three D Sonic I think was done really well in certain instances. Not great in, in other ones, but there were some versions where I was really impressed. Like uh, I remember just uh, sprinting at a track in three D and like looping around and like there there being like robots on the tracks you had to like battle and do your spin attacks for. I was like that's a that is a unique gameplay. Like much more action packed, a lot more going on. Than I would yeah, say a lot in, faster paced. Yeah, with it being more level by level, as opposed to just like taking your time and exploring, like in Mario, it was kind of like just get to that point and you've done. Mm-hmm. Like, do it as fast as you can. Exactly. So faster, maybe better. Uh, Jason <laughs> and Anthony, what do you have to say about that? Uh, Anthony, do you want to go first? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I want to start by saying that I I don't hate Sonic. I just don't think it's better than Mario. And uh, <laughs> and and maybe I don't know a lot of the Sonic games, but um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't say that you could like. Is there any particular Sonic game that you could say is better than a game like Super Mario World <laughs> or? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of people would say Sonic 2 or like Sonic 3 was better. I know people do have that opinion, whether that's right or wrong. Yeah. That's right, Rob. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. I feel like um, with the Mario games, and in particular, Anthony's just mentioned there, Super Mario World, um, there are, there's a very good case to be made for games such as Super Mario Brothers 3, 
Super Mario World mm. and uh, Super Mario uh, Mario 64, all three of them as you know some of the most groundbreaking uh, games. That certainly the, the Mario 64, some of the most groundbreaking and influential games of their time. And for Mario World and Mario 3, certainly among the very best games of all time, uh, hands down. I mean, not even just thinking Mario vs. Sonic, not even just mm-hmm. thinking platform games. I mean, you know, those are games that, are, that genuinely hold up today to repeated play, to discovering new things even, uh, you know, even today. And I feel like um, games like, uh, again, just echoing what Anthony said there, I certainly don't hate Sonic. You know, I, I enjoy an awful lot of Sonic games. <laughs> Um, no, you hate Sonic. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Uh, don't tell the plushie. Uh, and um, no, I really don't. Uh, Sonic 2, I think, is a fantastic game. The sort of split screen uh, in Sonic 2, whilst it's kind of got a few frame rate issues at times, I think that was an, an absolutely amazing experience uh, to play cooperatively through the game you know, alongside someone rather than having to take turns. Um, that was fantastic. Um, but put that next to Super Mario World and a game that I would I would still, to this day, go back to Super Mario World and potentially find new things or, uh, you know, mm. play the same levels again and again and still enjoy them in exactly the same way I did uh, to start with. You find with Mario games as well that um, there would be throwaway ideas in, you know, one level or one element of a level, like the Goomba Shoe, or in like a, a sort of scrolling <laughs> level in uh, Super Mario World where, uh, you know, you've got a, a stream of water along the bottom and it scrolls and uh, there's, there's water that you can sort of swim in as well as run along the platforms. And it's this kind of style that you never, ever see again repeated in all of those levels. Uh, you just feel mm. like they're stuffed full of ideas um, that are so good and yet you, you barely see them because there's so much else vying for your attention and so much else to discover. And I think that's uh, what keeps them very strong and very fresh. Um, Super Mario uh, 64... Um, I think without that, 3D platformers would look very different today. An awful lot of platformers leading up to that really struggled with the transition from 2D to 3D. Sonic himself did with Sonic 3D, which is an isometric game and not actually a 3D platformer. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think until Mario 64 came out, um, the rules for platform games in 3D were all over the place. Look at Jumping Flash, the first person, or Floating Runner on the PlayStation, which is a very sort of awkward, uh, yeah, has a very sort of awkward camera and so on, but it was, they were trying to achieve what Mario just sort of right out of the gate laid down the template and everyone followed. Mm. I think okay. looking back to the to the old school games, like mid to late 90s, I feel like Sonic had a very fast-paced game. You were kind of rushing to get your combos, trying to get to the end as quickly as possible, where your typical Mario games, you could, like Jason said, explore, find new areas. There was more, I would say, puzzle-based areas compared to Sonic. So I think there was like two distinctive um, demographics. You had the ones that just wanted to kind of smash through, be blown away with music and color. And then the more, you know, probably slightly more educated gamers who go, you know what, I actually want to explore this, do the puzzles, maybe get the high scores and stuff. Um, I was mm-hmm. the other side. I just wanted to smash through it and get overwhelmed by all the <laughs> colors. So woohoo! <laughs> Next. So, yeah. Even then, though, the old Sonic games do have that element of, like, kind of replayability because there's always different, like, ways to progress through the level. There's normally, yeah. like, three or four different, like, areas of the level that you can go through. Uh, mm-hmm. So I do think it has replayability to a degree. Yeah, absolutely. The the early Sonic games, I agree, they've got a very uh, kind of intricate level design in that, as you say, you can run through them and you can absolutely blast through the levels. At times, it can sometimes feel, especially if you're going that fast, it almost feels like you're not in control or that you're literally just reacting uh, sort of instinctively without being able to have that control that you have in Mario. But yeah, the levels mm-hmm. certainly do. If you do slow down and explore, there's an awful lot to find. Um, and yeah, the, the the level design itself is very impressive in Sonic, and certainly from an audio visual point of view, I think the Sonic games really do have that edge. The earlier ones, sorry, Mario. <laughs> Jason, you're not supposed to be vouching for Sonic, <laughs> <Sorry>. okay? <laughs> Goodness gracious! All right, well, uh, I, I think you guys have put in some good some good discussion here, um, and I feel like um, the the arguments I'm hearing is that Mario as a whole defined what games were going to be more often than like had the like most show-stopping performance or like you know examples of gameplay all the time but like they put up the groundwork in for what was to come 
almost every single time. And they still seem to be doing that with almost all their games. Um, but more recently, I think like Mario Odyssey and stuff like that, again, they're still putting in mechanics and stuff that really are like completely new. You're like, oh, wow, that's awesome. So I don't know. This is tough. This is tough. But I, I did look at the Metacritic score uh, for Mario and Sonic games, all mainline titles. And it was pretty close, actually. Closer than I thought it was going to be. Um, Mario came out on top with 88 Metacritic. And Sonic, I think, had 83 um, across all the mainline titles after close. I averaged all of them. So, yeah, pretty close. It's not bad. Yeah. Um, now, that might have been forgetting. Like, there may have been some other, like, weird spinoff things. I was trying to just pick the mainline stuff um, to get these these averages. Um, so, I have, to, I, have to, I have to lay a verdict down, which is, like, very against my personality. Like, I have a person who's always like, it's fine. Like, let's just do, you know, like, everyone's happy. <laughs> um but I think objectively, what I'm going to have to go with is I'm going to have to say that I do think collectively Mario did a little bit better in terms of like all of their games just release and perform very, very well. Sonic has had a lot more duds. Um, and while some of the other, his examples have been impressive, I do think that collectively overall Mario is is, is going to win this one. So. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Team Sonic. We're going to have to give that one to Mario. We'll, we'll, we'll get him back. Yeah, we'll, we'll get points back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, this next one's interesting. Anthony wants to go first on this one. So the floor is to see Team Sonic on who has the more compelling storyline and character development. Go ahead. Uh, the reason why I wanted to start this one off is because I just wanted to say that uh, realistically, both games <laughs> started with pretty small storylines and pretty uh, not so flushed out ideas. And then as they went on into the franchise, it got more developed, but I wouldn't say that necessarily either had the craziest storylines, um, no. especially in the beginning. And I don't personally know enough about the Sonic storyline to maybe know if I'm comparing correctly, but I don't think, Sonic really has much of a storyline. Mm. Mm. The maybe... older the older Sonic games definitely are right there. They didn't really have much going on. I would still say that they probably had a little bit more than what Mario had though. Like with Sonic 3, you had the whole thing with Knuckles who was being like sort of manipulated by Robotnik. And then at the end you sort of like make friends. It had that sort of thing going on that Mario has never really particularly had. Uh, but later on, I would definitely say that Sonic has the edge here with stuff like uh, Sonic Adventure in particular, like with the uh, chaos monster that's be like eating the emeralds and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Sonic Adventure 2, you've got the whole thing with Robotnik's, is it Robotnik's grandfather or something? Who like is on a spaceship and that like the spaceship like blows up and like his daughter called Maria is there or something. I yeah. don't know, it's, there's a lot going on with Sonic lore. Some dark there's stuff. E there's happening. even stuff like Sonic's had so many like TV series as well. Like the original one, it's got like Sonic Underground, Sonic X, the new Netflix one, Sonic Boom. It's got the comics by IDW. There's mm -hmm. there's a lot going on in the background of these Sonic games. I'm so glad I got Rob on my team. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm glad I, I, I have to I'm point glad out. Jason. As well. Sorry, talking about um, the comics. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, I think this still holds true. But um, Son and I'm sorry, I'm batting for Team Sonic again here. Uh, but uh, <laughs> in terms of law, um, Sonic unfortunately does have the edge uh, because uh, the Archie comics, uh, which started in the early 90s, um, they still hold the record for being the longest running licensed, continuously running licensed comic. Um, so, yeah, Sonic unfortunately i think has that <laughs> what have we got for mario i didn't even know that we can lay down uh all, all the facts we want about mario and his plots but mario 64 starts with peach baking him a cake and inviting him to the castle so um <laughs> you know <laughs> that's basically what kicks it off um and unless you're looking at sort of super mario rpg or the mario and luigi um ds games uh i think plot wise there's not much there for the most part. Uh, whereas Sonic, certainly an awful lot of the 3D games have an awful lot of cutscenes. There's a lot of lore there. In fact, I think one of the only times myself and Brandon uh, have been truly sort of humbled by one of our articles on Metro Dodo 
was when I was putting together oh, no. uh, a most powerful Sonic characters list. And uh, it was published. And within about five <laughs> minutes, Sonic fan had uh, emailed us to correct us on something. Uh, and we, we were sort oh, of forced gosh. to add this extra character uh, in, even though, and, and my argument for not including it, was that it wasn't actually canon because uh, there were some time travel shenanigans involved, which meant that what actually happened <laughs> to make this character so powerful didn't really happen because of the time travel. So, um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Jason, yeah, you're the worst. Sonic fans are extreme, aren't they? <laughs> they are indeed. Jason, you're the yeah. you're the worst. You're the worst. Uh, you're the worst defendant, or whatever the legal term is for Mario. <laughs> I'm just, you know, yeah. Who's who <laughs> teaming you on, buddy? <laughs> um, but if I were to speak uh, objectively as well, I do think, like the story with Mario. Correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, or anybody else that wants to chime in. The story with Mario has almost always been, "Hey, Peaches." Peach is gone or Bowser's bad. We got to stop this like that. That's pretty much every single Mario game. I don't there. There are a few exceptions. Like you mentioned, the Mario RPG series. But by and large, that's kind of it. Sonic games, just looking at them by themselves, have already packed in. I think yeah, more storyline, more side tangents, more stories with like these sub characters you have or his side, like, you know, uh, Tails or Amy, like stuff. Like, there's, there's, just, there's a little more going on with the characters in that world as opposed to I think most mainline Mario games. Mm. So I don't think there's anything think, wrong wrong with that in a sense because it opens the easy to understand storyline opens the games up to such a massive audience. Or if you oh, were to yeah. give a kid like Sonic Three, they'd be like, "What the hell is this red and blue hedgehog <laughs> thing?" You know, where where the Mario games are like, just just watch the first two minutes and you'll understand that you need to go save Peaches again. <laughs> Peaches. Peaches. I think the Mario franchise probably started started expanding on some of the character stories and stuff a little bit later than the Sonic games did. You know, you have some the Toad games and you have the Yoshi games and so and and there is there is a Peach game and so you have uh some of these characters being developed more later in this franchise but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe Sonic got that one. <laughs> it seems like we have a consensus. <laughs> Sonic wins in terms of storyline and character development. Come right, on, Jason. Next. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. It's, you know, got to be true. We've actually touched... <laughs> we've, we've touched on this a little bit. Um, and this one's going to be interesting because I think there's strengths in both. But the uh, best gameplay mechanics. So, um, so we had Team Mario start last time. Team Sonic, you have the floor. This is a... The thing is, is with Mario point. here is that, like, Mario... Like, kind of in the mainline games anyway, the 3D ones, it's always sort of the same mechanics that are just getting refined and, like, sort of adding in a new gimmick every time. Whereas Sonic, most of the time, will completely change the mechanics. So, like, you've got the, like, adventure era, which was a little bit more like, I don't know, like, maybe slower paced, even though it's still a Sonic game. Then you've got, like, the boost era that started with Sonic Colors that was, like, really, really fast. Uh, and Generations as well was a part of that, which is probably my favorite Sonic game. And then you've got like mm-hmm. this modern era with like Frontiers, where it's like an open world game. So mm-hmm. I think Sonic does a lot, lot more with its games. Um, so there's kind of something there for everybody. Mm. Yeah, I didn't think about the individual games being part of the uh, argument there. I was just thinking holistically of Sonic. But yeah, you're right. In terms of the different games they've had, there's a lot going on there. Mario. How do you respond? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Mario definitely did sort of just take his play style and just keep growing it and growing it. And like, if you look at Super Mario Bros. versus Mario Odyssey, and you see that gradient of expanding on those play styles, and then you have the RPG series and uh, like Sunshine adding the the jetpack water pack deal and, which is controversial uh, but i loved it i yeah i love that game um help me out jason <laughs> yeah i'll help you out so in super mario brothers 3 think about all the different costumes um the power of flight um swimming underwater in the mm-hmm. frog suit um again to, sort of moving on to things like um super mario 3d world and the cat suit and things like that. There's an awful lot done um, within each game that, that keeps them distinct and gives Mario a different sort of set of powers, even though the sort of general running, jumping, 
uh, you know, sort of backflipping and so on doesn't necessarily change. There's lots of mechanics within each individual game that do bring an awful lot to the party. Um, in terms of um, even Super Mario World, going back to that with like the feather, so getting the cape and, and learning how to use that uh, best to fly and so on. Um, I think there's, there is still an argument that Mario has a stronger um, set of mechanics and sometimes they just throw away. They don't come back, you know, um, going back to the Goomba shoe in that one stage in Super Mario Brothers 3. Um, <laughs> there's lots there that just gets used and it's like, do you know what? That's really, really cool and you'd love to see it come back and it for some reason never does and they just move on to doing bigger and better things. Super Mario Galaxy um, has the bee suit and all kinds of different costumes as well as, you know, having that, the mechanics of sort of running around tiny sort of globes and things. So there's, um, there's the, I, I still think there is a strong argument for Mario to have the, for having the strongest sort of moveset and, and mechanics and, a, a, you know, sort of a vast array of mechanics that change from game to game. Mm. I would that is have definitely to true. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Sonic does have other playable characters that completely change the mechanics in a similar sort of vein. And also, Sonic does get power-ups as well. He's got, like, the fire thing that lets him boost, uh, the bubble power-up that lets him bounce and breathe underwater. So Sonic does have Saiyan. that going on, too. Yeah, he can go Super Saiyan yeah. with the emeralds. Yeah, yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. He has it going on, too, but he doesn't have it going on as good as Mario, I think. Um, the, the, the idea of the suits is a big one that I didn't even think of at the moment but yeah the suits and then the different playable characters even starting in super mario brothers 2 mm -hmm. um, playing as the different characters who play very different and have different abilities mm -hmm. i also think for mario's side in terms of refinement right you know you're playing a mario game because of how good it feels you're like these power-ups all make sense in this context. They were designed intentionally for these kinds of levels and everything works together in a seamless way. That is, um, yeah, it just, it just doesn't have any friction almost ever. Whereas yeah, Sonic, I sometimes mean, they give you one of those power-ups and you're like, what is happening? Where am I supposed to be going? <laughs> like, well, I'm going so fast. I don't even know like where, like I can't even see anything right now. Um, yeah, so, so I think from the mechanic standpoint, uh, I was that's, going to say, with uh, to you saying about them being designed for the, the specific platforms and so on, uh, Mario 64 and being able to use the uh, analog stick to rotate and spin Bowser around, you know, just that tiny mm. little thing, which felt just so intuitive mm. uh, um, and just felt so good using that analog stick for the first time. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, one's tough, intuitive guys. Intuitive was the word I was going to say, too. Uh, it always feels like natural to do it. It doesn't yeah. feel hard to control those new mechanics as they're introduced they just flow really nicely mm -hmm. this one's tough this one i feel like really could go either way and i don't like being the uh the final the final verdict on they these can ones. have that point because i've already seen the next question and we're gonna <laughs> smash that one <laughs> okay brandon <laughs> i yeah i think mario from a mechanic standpoint is just a lot more solid sonic has some really cool stuff that they've tried i would say they're more experimental but from a just a quality mechanic standpoint, I mean, you can't beat that Miyamoto, Miyamoto uh, seal of quality on, on these games, you know. Um, so we're going to give that one to Mario. Two points Mario, one point Sonic. Close race so Mario. far, folks. <laughs> so up next we have, uh, Brandon thinks he's going to just take this one away. Uh, so we'll see about this. But a more iconic and recognizable design. And so since Sonic went last, we're going to have uh, Team Mario go first on this one. Um, yeah, so in the 80s, um, <laughs> around the time of Super Mario Brothers 3, um, it, Mario, I think, was, uh, rec as, was, one, it was noted as one of the most recognizable uh, characters in just pop culture anywhere. And I think it was perhaps second only to Mickey Mouse at the time. Um, so I think the, at the time, he was going through a bit of refinement in terms of his look, but they're, they're pretty much settled by that time, by Super Mario Brothers 3, on a standardized look. And that's... That's very rarely changed. Obviously, there's been iterations when he's moving to 3D and so on, but that kind of very standard look. Even in fact, even if you go back to him being Jumpman in Donkey Kong, the the sort of uh, blue overalls, red shirt, moustache, and so on, uh, it's it's there and it's been iconic from sort of the very beginning, even before he was Mario. Um, and I think that's that's remained consistent, of course, with the sort of differences when wearing different costumes and uh, and having different power ups and so on. Um, but yeah, I think it's um, his his design has has remained 
very, very similar for a good reason is because it, it works so well. I mean, Mario was at the Olympics. He, I mean, like his hat popped up out of the, at the Olympics, uh, in Tokyo. So, I mean, I don't know how much more global you can I mean, get in terms of recognizable. Sonic was there. You just didn't see him because he's so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brandon, what's, let's, uh, what's let's, your argument here? My argument is that Mario is quite simply just an overweight plumber. And <laughs> you're, you're playing as a super fast blue hedgehog. Like, there's no comparison. And, like, you could take it down to immediately, like, Super Mario's got his hat. Big deal. But then Sonic has his iconic shoes. You know, you go up to a kid and you go, hey, do you want to play as an overweight plumber? Or do you want to play as this super fast blue hedgehog? It's going to be the hedgehog, right? <laughs> oh, and you've got you've got a new friend. Oh, we've got a, another overweight plumber called Luigi. Or do you want to play as a... I don't even know what it is. Is it an orange squirrel that can fly? Hell it's yeah. It's, it's a fox. It's a fox. Hey, hey, we not Luigi's not judge overweight. Step in there a bit. Yeah, Luigi's the skinny brother. Luigi's definitely not overweight. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Brandon. Brandon coming in with the offensive, the offensive <laughs> statements. Listen, put my knuckle dusters on for that one. Yeah, if this is if this were a, a who's cooler argument, I would say maybe you've got a you got an edge there, Brandon. But this is iconic and recognizable yeah. design. As far as more about, recognizable, you got to think about Come across on, the world. If someone were to see an M logo or maybe any sort of, maybe let's just show someone the shoe from Sonic and maybe the hat from Mario. Who do, what's, who's going to be the more recognized emblem there? The more recognized uh, situation. I feel like if you, you know, took away Mario's hat, it would be a little bit fairer, wouldn't it? Because then it's just a guy <laughs> in overalls versus a blue hedgehog. Like is Sonic's guy? face yeah. is definitely more iconic. But yes. Yeah. That's Mario's got one. that hat, that darn hat. <laughs> That M. <laughs> but if you were to ask like anyone, like you know, if you were to ask my mum, and you you put up Mario, I don't think she'd get Mario. But like a blue hedgehog, she's gonna be like, "What the fuck is is that? That little thingy that you that what's his name? The blue blue quiff." <laughs> I don't know. My my mom my mom was like every other mom in the world where they just called everything the, the Nintendo. So we would have like mm. you know a PlayStation, and she would just call it the Nintendo. Turn the Nintendo off, you know. <laughs> And I think that's I think that still is more a result of just Nintendo capitalizing and just being so I, I think Mario benefits also from having been Nintendo being so dominant. Um, but I don't know. I know I'm the one that's like vouching more in this argument right now, but I I I, I think Mario wins this one very easily in terms what of iconic and my <laughs> iconic and recognizable design. And I agree. <laughs> oh dang. I, I do we had that one. I do think Sonic is uh, iconic, um, but comparatively, I don't think you, you're not seeing us. You're not seeing a Sonic world popping up. <laughs> a, a Sonic theme parks popping up. Okay, you're seeing Mario theme parks popping up. They're definitely. Yeah, there was both a very Sonic iconic. ride at Alton Towers. I'll have you know. <laughs> was it was it like super fast? You know, it actually wasn't particularly. <laughs> fast. It spun around. I think that was the thing, but it, it wasn't on. fast. Damn. I was gonna, I was gonna say it has to be fast, like and, and honestly, Sonic, ride, is, right. Sonic is a great idea for a ride that needs to happen. I'll talk to, we'll talk to Nintendo or Miyamoto and see if he wants to give Sonic a little, a little mm. section of his own over there. That's funny. All right, this next one, we'll see how this goes. Most interesting supporting cast of characters slash villains. So we had who just went last? Uh, so, did Sonic go last? Mm. No, uh, Mario, went, Mario last. went first. Mario last went last. Yeah. So yeah, so Sonic, uh, you have the floor. <sighs> well, I think I think actually Sonic is like probably better in this area, just because Mario does have a lot of characters, but most of them are just like enemies. They just kind mm -hmm. of like walk left and right and don't really do anything. It's not really like they're like <laughs> developed or anything. Stupid Sonic Goombas. has a lot of like side characters that actually do stuff to progress the story. Mm -hmm. As more villains, obviously the main one is Robotnik or Eggman. But outside mm -hmm. of that, you've got like Shadow was a villain, like even Knuckles was a villain. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got Metal Chaos Sonic. in Sonic Adventure. Like all of these like new interesting villains that change up the formula. And that's even without Sonic's friends. Like, I don't know, you've got like time travelers with like Silver the Hedgehog, Blaze the Cat. Uh, you've got obscure ones like Fang the Sniper. 
Uh, yeah, like there's Kang's just so sniper. many, so many Sonic characters. It's unreal. Mario does not have a sniper. I'll tell you that no. much right now. Too not family friendly enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty strong argument there, Rob. Uh, Mario team, how are you going to respond to this? I let Anthony because um, I think I'm agree. With, I agree with Rob on this one. So Anthony can feel the uh, <laughs> feel the question uh, for Mario. Yeah. Unfortunately, when I heard the question, I was like, "Ah, you might have this one." So, <laughs> yeah. but we got some we got some cool side characters, but uh, less developed and less uh, less interesting maybe than the Sonic one. So, we'll concede this one. <laughs> yeah, I think this goes yeah. back to um, the law and the long running sort of tie in um, products such as the comics. Uh, you know, it's it's had an awful lot more room to develop a supporting cast. So, uh, an awful lot of those characters developed or were introduced first in the comics and then brought into the games. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that's definitely had an effect. And I feel like an, a lot of the, the later Sonic games are very much more story-based, um, whereas Mario is sort of stuck with the keeping things very straightforward and simple. You know, when you think of Mario enemies, do you think of Bowser and um, you, you can... You, you will recognize an awful lot of the uh, enemies like Goombas and Koopas and so on. But really, as to individual characters, apart from, you know, the few that sort of have that are on the side of the good guys in Mario, I don't think there's very many beyond the core cool cast that, that really sort of stick in the mind. I would say yeah. that Mario had more unique designed villains, where Sonic kind of kept it quite um, close to the heart with like Shadow the Hedgehog, yeah. Metal Sonic. Whereas, you know, in Mario, you've got like Bowser, you've got like King Boo, the, the King bob Arm. they're all quite unique. Mm. A lot of them you kind of never see again, though. Like, King bob mm. is really interesting, but as far as I'm aware, they're only in Mario 64. Maybe they're in, like, some spin-offs, I don't know, but, mm. yeah, never really do anything outside of the one game. And even then, they're only in one level. Yeah, that that's the downfall of Mario's side, is they have all these really good, like, side spin-offs, you know, where they'll use those characters more. Like, I think... Uh, Paper Mario and Mario RPG, those those uh, series do really cool things with characters, um, and you have some really memorable, like well written characters that are on those teams. But they're stuck in those games only, and you're not going to see them anywhere else in terms of Mario's games. You know, mm. maybe one day, but yeah, I think in this in this realm, Sonic um, probably has a bit more of a prominent cast of supporting characters and villains. So, yeah, Sonic much more developed. Sonic 2, Mario 3. All right. Um, getting close here to the end. Best TV, film, and adaptations. And this one's this one's a little more come interesting on. because we just recently had mm. the Mario Bros. movie come out. So um, this one is going to start with... Did we just do Mario first? I keep getting mixed up now. Mario no. first this time, I think. Mario first this time. I bolded it. I was like, did that? That's, that's right. Okay. So, Mario, you have the floor. I mean, you have one of the most successful animated films of all time. Um, mm -hmm. And it was um, incredible. Um, they definitely, uh, Sonic definitely had the better media prior to this movie. <laughs> but I would say this movie certainly made up for it. Yeah. I would, I would probably still say that Sonic. Is pr like Mario was more successful, definitely, probably partially due to the fact that it's more iconic and recognizable thanks to that darn hat. Uh, but <laughs> um, I would say that Sonic's is probably better. Like, the Mario film was good, but it didn't really have a lot going on, like, story wise. It was just mostly, like, colors and, like, oh, look at all of these characters and, like, cameos and stuff. Sonic kind of, especially with the second one, it drew more from the games themselves. And like it's now getting like a knuckles spin off. It's getting like the third film, which is probably going to be about Shadow, which is based on Sonic Adventure 2. I don't know. I think Sonic, because it already has a lot of lore going on, it probably makes the films a little bit better. I think, well, the Mario, the, the most recent Mario movie does very, very well is, is the fan service um, and the, the sort of references. Uh, callbacks to numerous games in uh, in Mario's history, and it, it feels incredibly faithful as a result. You know, a lot more faithful than even I would say the the live action Sonic movies do. But I um, 
I'm going to be a bad uh, Mario advocate here and uh, and agree because I mean the um, <laughs> all, all of the Sonic cartoons, um, the Sonic, the two Sonic movies. I think you know they they have that law to build upon that I think just mm-hmm. isn't quite there for Mario. Um, and you know we we'll, we won't talk about the live action movie for Mario from the '90s. <laughs> I actually did see it at the cinema, um, but yeah, it's uh, I think if we were going to be comparing before the animated Mario movie came out, we'd be talking about that and that would be in the mix. Um, and so I think it would be absolutely no contest, but yeah, of course the most recent animated Mario film does complicate things somewhat <laughs> and only just. I looked at, I I looked if at we, numbers. It, it, if Mario we made, tea. sorry, Rob. Um, no, that's all right. You go ahead. I was just, just want to throw in some numbers here. Mario made $1.3 billion in the cinemas and Ooh. Sonic made just three hundred and twenty million. So almost, almost wow, like I mean, that's still group. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, comparatively. And that though, that it's... shows the fan support, and uh, you know, a lot of that is going to be repeat um, watchers. So true. Yeah, I I certainly think that the Mario media is, you know, it's got a lot of catching up to do, and and this is a great step in the right direction for Mario movies and opening up the door for many more i'm sure but um to me the quality is i personally felt the movie was 10 out of 10 quality so um, i think the mario movies could jump into like separate characters as well whereas the sonic movie franchise like rob said they're kind of doing one two three they're moving into knuckles whereas you you never know we could have a, a luigi movie a donkey kong movie and so on yeah. yeah Are we also really... going to talk about the fact that the Sonic movies really dodged a bullet with the initial character design and the fan <laughs> reaction to it? Oh, yeah. I remember um, that. that a horrific thing. Ugly Sonic. <laughs> Ugly Sonic. I think that was a marketing stunt. I really do. They got around that way uh, too quick. Oh, they it, it, it was delayed by about a year. Um, and <laughs> I, I just don't think that that would be the case. I, I did have my suspicions at the time, but there's no way you would get that far into it and uh, then suddenly decide to delay for an entire year when sort of film schedules are built around release dates and so on. Yeah. That was yeah. a big move from them to, to change it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think when I was thinking of this question, um, I thought of the iconic, just like Sonic TV shows. Um, yeah. You know, they had so many spinoff TV shows that I think were actually pretty quality. Like just, you know, Sonic's whole personality was eating cheese dogs and saving the world. And, and I think, watching that as a kid i I like that i wish mario bros had more media just across the board but like anthony was saying i think the mario bros movie is an excellent first step in that direction you know like we find i finally feel like nintendo has an idea of what they want to do and they can just keep building on that they can turn it into a tv series if they want to they can make more films like they can do whatever they want to with that Mm -hmm. style of animation um so i think holistically though if we're looking at best tv film adaptations i think the edge still goes to sonic because of what they have available right now um mario movies is great but there's i mean even the sonic movies that came out recently have like jim carrey and stuff like that and those are okay movies like they're totally fine and i think most people say the first one's actually a really good video game adaptation movie Um, but with with that combined with the tv stuff i think sonic is still going to win in this scenario now if you're looking at IMDb scores and stuff, yes, Mario has a better performing film. But I think if you average it all out, even including their horrific, <laughs> real, real live action Mario Bros. movie, I think uh, I think Sonic's going to win this one. So it's all tied up, folks. We have a uh, three three right now. We have three questions left. So this one's going to be I don't know. We'll see. Whose games have aged better over time? This one goes to Sonic first. Mm. That I, I'm gonna have to be a traitor on this one and, sit and, and 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 say Mario. You know, they're just most of them are so easy to pick up and play. You know, because of the tech they use, it's like mainly 2D and some 3D elements. Like, it's just in some ways ageless, and that's why all the classics are coming back. That's why people are being, you know, are going back and buying original hardware because they just want to play where it all started. And Sonic, I think, has aged. I'm not going to say poorly, but not as well as as, as Mario. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what like sort of era as well, because I would say that the like the Mega Drive or Genesis Sonic games have actually aged pretty well, like the main ones in a way. Yeah. But it's when you go a little bit after that where they start showing the rage a bit more because of the like they didn't really quite have three D like design down. Uh, so like the adventure games have probably dated even more than the original ones. Yeah. Uh, but those original ones still stand up. Like they're getting re-releases, re-releases all the time. So people obviously still want to play them too. Mm. Mm-hmm. Team Mario. Yeah, I mean, if you look at even just Super Mario Bros., the very first one, and I mean, you could still pick that game up today and play it. And it's just incredible. And then. Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World. When you're in that generation versus the Sega Genesis era Sonic, to me, the the amount of very high quality Mario games right there is is already showing you um, Mario is winning in this one, I think. And then, yeah, I think the 3D games, um, having Sunshine Galaxy, you can maybe group that with... Uh, Mario 64, those first few 3D games versus some of the first few 3D Sonic games. A lot of those are still awesome today to me, the Mario mm-hmm. ones. So I think yeah. Mario takes this one pretty easy. Yeah, I completely <laughs> agree. Um, I mean, there's um, obviously the, the the sort of Mega Drive, Genesis, uh, Sonic games. They still look phenomenal. You know, that kind of pixel art style. There we go. Uh, oh, modeled beautiful. there by Brandon. Um, with that pixel art style is is still you know absolutely gorgeous and and an awful lot of indie games these days draw inspiration from from games such as that. Um, you know you look at Super Mario World and it's and it's a very nice looking game, but put it next to Sonic Two or or even the first Sonic, and you know there's there's kind of no contest in terms of the the the, the way that the visuals look. Yeah, I think the gameplay has definitely aged much better in the Mario games. And, and as I mentioned before, I think there's definitely an argument for those games, for those early Mario games, 3 and World, for example, um, being amongst the very best games of all time. That you know, Any time I sit or sit down with an emulator, you can almost guarantee that Super Mario World's the, the sort of first game that I go to <laughs> Yeah, every time. They're just so, yeah. they're so good. They're so yeah. easy to just pick up and play, and they just make sense. Yeah. yeah. So... I'm, I, I agree with this one. Mario is going to be the one that's going to age better over time. All right. So it's 4-3. Next question. Which character's games offer a more challenging and rewarding experience? This goes to Team Mario first. Okay. For us, um, I think the challenge doesn't necessarily lie in completing the games because quite often that's a very straightforward thing to do. The challenge is, is in, in what you set yourself, you know, getting the, finding the different exits in Super Mario World, collecting all the stars in Super Mario 64. You don't have to do it, but all that is there for you if you choose to do it, and that's where the real challenge lies. So I think it's, it's dependent upon players to sort of seek out that challenge for themselves because, yeah, it's, yeah it's, I think usually they're very, fairly straightforward to actually pick up, play, and finish um, in a relatively short space of time, but if you want to push yourself further and and find everything they have to offer, that's going to take you significantly longer. And I don't think that's really changed over the years with Mario games either. Yeah, yeah. For the most part, is progress through the levels. Will you complete every level and collect all the things? So, mm. yeah. What is what does Sonic have compared to that? Let's hear, let's hear your side of that one. Isn't yeah. it kind of the same deal? Progress to the <laughs> level, collect a bunch of rings. Hope for the best. I think that Sonic, just in terms of the level design, especially in the earlier ones, it just was more inherently challenging. I feel like you were you basically in Mario, like within reason, you're never going to get a game over or anything. But Sonic, you actually probably will, especially if you're playing them for the first time. There's yeah. so many like traps and stuff to avoid that will literally just one hit kill you. Um, and in terms of being rewarding, you never really get anything for like 100% completing a Mario game, like nothing substantial anyway. Whereas in Sonic, you or you unlock Super Sonic, or like sometimes you unlock like new characters along the way and stuff like that. So I think the reward element of it is probably actually a little bit higher in Sonic games. But uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you mm. think? 
Well, I do, I do, uh, I, <clears throat> I do like the idea of unlocking something after one hundred percenting it. Um, and there is the, there are some Mario games that do that. Uh, I believe Mario Galaxy one or two. When you get all the stars in that game, it lets you play as Luigi. Am I incorrect in saying That's that? That's true. Yeah, that is true. Um, so they they do that in some of the games. Um, and there are like yeah, maybe little Easter eggs if you get everything, but it's never like a substantial reward sometimes. Um, but the reward I think to, to think about is, you know, Ch- Sonic was certainly more challenging. I, I agree. Uh, those games were hard. I remember just being confused a lot of the times about what I was doing. So like if I beat a level, I was like, yes, I did it. I don't even know what I did, but I did it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Whereas Mario, you were like, oh, that was tough. That was a tough platforming section. And there were some really hard levels in Mario too. Um, so this one's kind of tough. Um, but the rewarding part is what it comes down to. So like which which of the games feels best to have like completed the whole thing um and like how does it reward you in that way so that's... like if i can take this um i think in sonic you've touched upon something really interesting there in that it was very very challenging but quite often you complete a level without really realizing how you did it and mm-hmm. i think the, the the rewarding part in mario is knowing that you have mastered it with your skill rather than yeah you've earned it's perfectly it. possible in sonic to get to the end of a level and go whoa how did i even do that i was just literally tapping jump <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and and it doesn't feel it feels great to have finished a level because it's as you say it's so challenging. But also there's those one hit kills that you just think that came out of nowhere. It's so fast I couldn't keep up. I you know I, I didn't really feel like I was in control. Um, and I think that's that's quite key in Mario is that you when you've achieved something you always know how and why you've you've done it um, mm. and know you know what to look out for and what to do next time in order to explore and to go somewhere else. I agree that this, the Sonic levels are sort of, you know, very intricately designed, for, and, but a lot of the time, you, you know, you're running through them very, very quickly um, and, and don't really get a chance to stop and see everything or, or to figure out where, you know, routes to go. Whereas in Mario, it's much more measured in that sense. Hmm. I feel like a part of the reward of the Sonic games might come down to the fact that they're so replayable because you're just blasting through level after level. Um the, the reward comes from almost mastering like how did I actually complete that level and getting better mm-hmm. at it to the point where you do actually understand how you did it in the first place and you can do it more efficiently on your next try as well. Yeah, for me, the the, the dopamine that I used to get from Sonic was the, the mastering the levels and, the, and, the, and, you know, landing on things, dodging stuff, hitting things, whereas Mario for me is... The, the the level doesn't really give you the reward. It's the puzzles and the challenges that are throughout the level. If that makes sense, it almost feels like how do I even explain this? Like Mario is a bit like a TV show, but Sonic is more like a movie that you just you just go through it and there's your dopamine. Whereas Mario, you're getting your dopamine every every TV episode. I've I've definitely overcomplicated that there, but uh, <laughs> I, I get where I'm coming from. I I, I think I see. <clears throat> I think you see where you're going with that one. You know, the, the Mario stuff can be sectioned off a bit more, whereas Sonic's the whole level you're going through it like that, where there might be only some challenging elements in some Mario. Like Mario levels, it starts off with like easy, really hard part, easy part, like really hard part, and then you finish it up. And I don't know, Sonic probably is similar in a lot of ways to that as well. Um, I guess something else as well that Sonic has that Mario doesn't particularly have is way better boss fights that make the overall mm. progression a lot more rewarding because you're like, oh, what is the like next boss design going to be and like how am I going to beat it? Yeah, but the bosses are almost sometimes a puzzle in themselves. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that element of it is something that Sonic actually does better than Mario. It almost has that. Um... Oh gosh, I'm blanking on the game name right now, but just your traditional. Uh, 2D side scroller boss design where it kind of floats above the stage sometimes and it swoops down at you and tries to hit you kind of like a Mega Man boss almost um, in a lot of ways. And those are those are hard. Those are those are hard. So when you do beat those guys, that feels rewarding as well. You're like, yes. Whereas a Mario boss, you just know I just got to hit it three times and it's dead. You know, like you just, just got to jump on his head three times and I'm good to go. Um, so, At the end of every Sonic <clears throat> level, you're rescuing all sorts of little critters as well. Whereas in Mario, you just Chows. touch a flag. That's it. I think yep. it's more rewarding saving <laughs> the critters. <laughs> That's a good point. Saving the animals. Anthony's rolling his eyes. 
Yeah, you had to bring that into it, huh? Got to win, <laughs> got to win me over on that one. Just touching the <laughs> pole at the end. This is really tough. I actually thought this was going to go Mario's way almost immediately when we kind of were talking about it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. This is this is hard, and right yeah, now it's do. three four. This <laughs> you know what to do, but I do think. Sonic games, I, by and large, are more challenging because of just the speed at which you play them. They're just they're harder. Like that's that's a that's a fact. Um, but there are some levels in Mario that are insanely hard, especially like as they realize that that's what some people wanted was that a crazy challenge. So after you would like one hundred percent a game, sometimes you'd unlock those crazy levels or like time trials, or just these like really really hard collectibles that are like placed like far up in the map like how do i even get up there like that's there's that's the challenge right there um but then rewarding yeah that's that's hard too yeah touching a pole versus saving animals <laughs> <laughs> all right <clears throat> to keep things interesting and because i am totally not unbiased and this is this is how this is gonna go we're gonna give that point to sonic making it a tied a, a tied match and at the very end here we have one last question i made it nine on purpose because i knew this might happen who would win in a fight the final question of our mario versus sonic podcast and this one is going to start out with sonic on the floor so give us give us your best guys and anthony anthony made a note here as well as the most experienced in fighting um i'd like to start this one off as well but unfortunately anthony this one has to go to sonic first that's okay that's okay <laughs> You can hear their arguments and rebuff them like like you would as, in a fight, sort of. As an overweight Italian, I know how hard it is <laughs> to fight. Um, so, you know, Mario can probably only last a few minutes throwing fists, you know. What's, what's he going to do? He might turn into a little cat, but then Sonic's just going to go around <laughs> and just kick him wherever he can't see. He might land on all fours, but I'll just kick him again because Sonic's that fast. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think Sonic has this, like, hands down, right? Like, even if Mario had, like, the power-ups, like, even if he had the invincibility power-up, that only lasts a certain amount of time. He wouldn't be able to touch Sonic in that amount of time. Sonic can turn into Super Sonic if we're counting power-ups. Like, Ma Sonic's got, like, loads and loads of, like, friends that are, like, way more powerful than any of the people Mario could have. Like, I don't know. I just feel like Sonic has this. Mm. Just need to keep him away from the mushrooms. Maybe if you were having a fight in a mushroom <laughs> field, that would be a little different. <laughs> Anthony's thinking. He's got he's got some uh, some thoughts here. Yeah, I mean, Sonic definitely has the speed. I mean, both characters, their primary attack is jumping on someone's head. But uh, <laughs> yeah, if we start factoring in uh, different suits or different power ups, or uh, has Sonic ever had a gun? Shadow was that has, yeah. maybe yeah because <laughs> in Mario versus Rabbids you got some laser guns so that's true. you can be as fast as you want if you get a laser just <laughs> but uh you both have I mean Mario Mario has the invincibility star I guess um, Mario could hop in his go kart if he wanted to like match speed with Sonic and, could and be he could toss his hat on a T Rex and turn into a T Rex <laughs> temporarily yeah. turn into a, yeah. a bomb temporarily. <laughs> This Sonic good... has probably defeated like robots that are bigger than a dinosaur, though. Surely, what happens? What happens if Mario just to tosses his hat onto Sonic? <laughs> what happens and with the new Odyssey mechanics? Or onto and Shadow, maybe make him run onto a spike and jump off. And <laughs> yeah. Sonic loses his rings once, and he's screwed. So that is a very good point. <clears throat> Sonic does not have as much HP as Mario does. Mario has Mario has a, is that always the case in Sonic games? I'm not sure. I, I think know. there's I think there's some Sonic games where he has health. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's that's I mean, true. In in the basic Mario game, he only has a, uh, in one up mushrooms he can small. collect. And then yeah, big or small. And so. Mario's friends have like typically the same kind of powers as him, whereas Sonic's friends, you've got Tails, you've got Knuckles, you know, we're we're zipping and zapping and flooping and flying. In a gang fight, yeah, you, you, it'd be interesting. But then you have like spin off characters like Donkey Kong who kind of just smashes True. everything, you know. Well, he's Yoshi just a monkey. Can... Like, he's just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like he, he can't do much, can he? Like, hey, against Primates like Shadow, who's basically the same as Sonic. Like, 
I don't know if you saw the, the Mario Bros movie. Donkey Kong was doing a lot of stuff in there. Mm, a gorilla like versus yeah, a hedgehog. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you think about this them is in a, a supersonic yeah. hedgehog we're talking about here. If you think about yeah, real world hedgehogs, a gorilla in a tie. <laughs> A real world hedgehog. That's a funny picture. Just a plumber stomping on a mar- real hedgehog. Yeah. That's got blue dye all over it. The weight the weight class also is an interesting comment. I mean, thing to think about. You know, how much does Sonic weigh versus Mario? Are you when talking Mario's... like standing, or are you talking like running three thousand miles per hour? Because the hedgehog <laughs> will just go straight through Donkey Kong's chest. I'm just talking about Mario. Like if they were to like wrestle. You know, I think Mario's in a diff- Mario's in a different weight class. You know, and so Sonic has like string bean arms. Like he doesn't really have any mass, <laughs> any muscle behind what he's got going on there. At least Mario, you, you're not totally sure what he's got going on there. Like he's he's hiding it behind them jeans and the, that that shirt. <laughs> we get into any sort of grappling situation, and Mario's got this for sure. Yeah, I mean, he can freaking. I don't know. Chunk- Sonic grapples pretty well in Smash and, Bros. His and back he can throw, throw those hands. It's dangerous. <laughs> But have you seen Mario toss Bowser? I mean, I don't know. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, he's <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's that's true, King yeah. Bob bomb. That's a big old heavy bomb and and turtle that he's tossing around. Oh man, this is this is tough. I'm gonna need y'all to give me like a few more a few more examples of what would what would decide a winning winning factor in a fight. I guess you know another I mean? thing is if we just consider base move sets here, Sonic has a lot more just like basic abilities. Like he's got like the home in attack, he's got the spin dash, the jump, it, like mid jump, he's basically invincible because he's spinning at the same time. Mm. Whereas like Mario doesn't have as much with his base move set. Like he basically in 64 he can punch, I guess, but <laughs> that's that's about it. He can jump on people, but like like I said, so can Sonic, and he's invincible mid jump. Mm. That's true. Mm. Well, uh, if we think about yeah. hedgehogs and what their actual nemesis is, uh, we're talking about vehicles, right? Um, and <laughs> Super Mario Kart. I mean, what's more iconic than that? You know, <laughs> Mario Kart versus a hedgehog. Vehicles. <laughs> Sonic has a car too. <laughs> he does For some reason, I don't know why. Yeah, I know. Run, but who but... would win in a race is what we're asking. <laughs> yeah, why does Sonic have a car in the first place? <laughs> That's a good point, Rob. I just got, I be just got dark running? real quick. <laughs> <laughs> the arch nemesis, a car <laughs> running them a over. A car. Yeah, a tire. <laughs> oh. oh, I mean, this is your, your whole argument is based on Sonic's speed and just because you could zip around and zap around doesn't mean you're going to catch me. You know what I'm saying? So you, <laughs> at some point, you're going to have to make contact to have a fight. So I don't know. Just because your little blue hedgehog is zapping around and making little poking at little angles. <laughs> Mario's emphasis can on jump the up and do. He can slam him down on his butt and smash him. <laughs> Oh, one, we one got butt, spikes, butt man. Smash. We got spikes. Yeah, you don't. You want one, to ground pound a spiky hedgehog, dude? Bowser's got one spikes. Mario's dealt with Sonic's spikes gone. before. Come on, <laughs> got ass like steel. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, when when Mario jumps on spikes, he has a bad time. I mean, Sonic does too. Uh, but you, you know, Mario has a weakness to spikes as well. Oh man, this one's really tough. This there's. There's arguments for both sides that really are not very clear. I mean, this fight sounds like it'd be a terrible fight to watch, to be honest. Mario, <laughs> Sonic's just sprinting in circles, and Mario's just trying to like jump on him the entire time. <sighs> if I'm thinking, if I'm thinking just logically, Mario has to rely on power ups to be able to do anything of substance. You know, like Mario needs his one up. He needs his he needs his firepower and he needs his star. You know, and maybe he's traveling with that stuff. Like in the games, you can store up your items and use them when you need them. So maybe he's he's in a fight scenario where he's already brought some of those weapons to a fight. But if we're talking just bare bones, we're meeting after lunch, we're gonna fight. Um <laughs> Sonic doesn't need as much. Sonic's already really fast, and I think even with his velocity, if he were to sprint straight at Mario and kick him. I don't know. I don't know if Mario could Kick do that. Kick the hat straight off his head. I don't know how resilient Mario is. I mean, Mario has his hat, and he could throw his hat uh, at Sonic. And well, you um, already talked about how fat he is, so he could withstand that punch. So. 
Yeah, he's a bit rubbery, isn't he? So, he, you know, he's definitely got stamina. He's got stamina. And he could take he could take at least one hit and turn into mini Mario. And he could be okay, maybe. <laughs> but then after that, he's toast. And meanwhile, Sonic, when he gets hit, he's just losing some coinage, you know? He's just losing some money when he gets hit, you know? Mm. Not, not you as can much just of... pick that up again straight away as well. Whereas with Mario, it's just gone. Yeah. Can't get that back. Oh, man. Well... All right, guys. I'm gonna have to lay the verdict down here, and I think I think who would win in a fight in this scenario would be Sonic. Ooh. I think Yay. Sonic. I think Sonic would win in a fight. I think he would. <laughs> and so, in an unexpected turn of events, <laughs> yeah, I did not see that coming. I did not see this coming. Sonic wins in this podcast. Uh, five to four. Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not said... sure I'm even happy with that, to be honest. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I shouldn't have defended as hard there. <laughs> well, I, so here's the thing. I, I picked questions that would be a bit more ambiguous on both sides, like things that could be argued either way. And uh, I think maybe we gave, we gave Sonic some options with the TV and film adaptations. I think that really helped him out there a lot because Mario doesn't really have that. So... <laughs> I gave y'all. I gave y'all two points uh, essentially back to back, and um, you know I think if you were comparing the games holistically, I think Mario games still are held in much higher regard across the board than Sonic's. But if we're looking at the characters themselves and like them being attached to their games, it looks like Sonic's going to win in this scenario, especially in a fight. Especially mm. in a fight. Which especially, is, oh man! <laughs> especially in a fight. <laughs> Because Mario has to have items, you know. He has to, like if someone were to pick a fight with him while he was, you know, not prepared, he's done, dude. He's got nothing. He just he, he can just jump. I guess he's got run. his hat. Can't he like spit and jump on his hat and stuff? And but he can like run then. kind of fast. He can like run. That's kind only of fast. with Cappy though. If we're if we're counting companions here, then I still think Sonic would win. Yeah, yeah. Cappy's a companion. Just an overweight at that point. plumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Mario. So there you have it, folks. I'm sure we're gonna get some we'll get some comments on this one or some feedback <laughs> on this one. But Sonic <laughs> Sonic wins in this scenario. Not all scenarios, but in this podcast on this day for episode fifty, we have determined that Sonic versus Mario, uh, Sonic is the winner in that scenario. And, so and that Anthony needs to pick better teammates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason, the worst partner ever. Sorry. Worst legal partner ever. Yeah. Hold on one second. <laughs> Oh, my little, my little, uh, my son's joining the podcast to uh, close us out here. Mario or Sonic? You should ask him. <laughs> yeah, let let him pick. What do you What do you think, bro? Sonic Mario, or Mario or Sonic? No. <laughs> he just said no. no. no nobody <laughs> wins. I I Mario can't cancel, yeah, cancel the argument. Ape escape. <laughs> yeah. Ape escapes the winner. The debate Amazing. is over. <laughs> um, See ya. Well, that's awesome. Um, so, unfortunately, folks, that is all the time we have this week. Listeners, did we get this right or did we get this totally wrong? Let us know by writing into retrospect at retrododo.com or voting in our poll on Spotify. Um, friends, thank you so much for being on the podcast. If you want to, really quick, I'll just go through. You can kind of plug your social handles. So, Rob, where can folks find you on the internet? <laughs> Uh, people can find me on Retro Dodo. I've been the video producer there for a while, so you can see a lot of my stuff there now. I've done some pretty cool stuff, I would say, and some more cool stuff coming soon. Exciting things ahead. Uh, Jason? Yeah, so you can find me at midlifegamegeek.com, uh, also on Retro Dodo and cardgamer.com uh, as well. Mm. Fantastic. Anthony? You can find me doing news and reviews on RetroDodo.com and Nara makes games everywhere else. Fabulous. And Brandon, people already know, but tell them anyways. Retro underscore Dodo or CardGamer.com. All righty. And I am Bitblogist, B-I-T-B-L-O-G-G-I-S-T. And uh, you'll, you'll see me just posting things randomly every now and then, but mostly this podcast. So until next time, y'all. We'll catch you in the next episode. Adios.